All right, this is study six of our study in Galatians. Today, we're gonna to be looking at chapter two, verse 11 to 14. Before we do, we'll answer the seven questions of chapter two, verse one to 10. Uh, so the first question was about who Paul presented his gospel to. And it says that Paul presented his gospel privately to the apostles and leaders of the Jerusalem church. You'll see that in chapter two, verse two, verse six and verse nine. He didn't come down and, and speak it to all. He spoke it to just the apostles and the leaders there. Question two, uh, how did they respond to Titus when he came down? And the apostles and leaders accepted Titus as an uncircumcised Gentile brother in Christ, and they didn't demand that he would be circumcised. You see that in verse three. Question three, uh, how did they respond to the gospel that, that Paul presented? And the apostles and leaders added nothing to Paul's gospel but they instead recognized it as the same gospel that they were preaching. You'll see that in verse six. Question four, uh, how did they um, recognize Paul or what did they recognize about Paul? The apostles and leaders recognized that God had called Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles and they embraced him and Barnabas as brothers and partners in the gospel. You see that in verse seven to nine, that they were equals uh, in the gospel work. Question five, what did they ask of Paul? The only thing they asked of Paul was that he would continue to care for the poor in Judea. And it says that he was actually eager to do that anyway. You see that in chapter two, verse 10. You'll also see it in Romans 15, verse 25 to 28, 1 Corinthians 16, one to three, and 2 Corinthians eight and nine. Question six was about the, the false brothers, what they were doing. And the false brothers mentioned here are the Judaizers. Paul describes them as having snuck into the church, seeking to bring believers back into the bondage of the Mosaic Covenant. It was likely that they began to put pressure on Titus, saying that he needed to be circumcised. Question seven, how did Paul respond? Well, Paul and Barnabas withstood these men and refused to yield to them. You see that in verse five. So this is Paul's summary of his second visit to Jerusalem. And again, he's defending the fact that uh, the apostles recognized his gospel as the legitimate gospel. They added nothing to it and that they recognized him as an apostle. So it's, it's defending the, against the accusations that the Judaizers had made that he had twisted the gospel and that he wasn't actually the apostle. He says, actually, look at look what all that happened in Jerusalem. It's, it's legitimate. So now we're in verse 11 to 14 of chapter 2. So Paul and Barnabas, after this visit in Jerusalem, returned to Antioch, probably encouraged, uh, believing that the issue of the Judaizers had been dealt with. Sadly, however, there was much more to come. Sometime later, uh, probably uh, after Paul and Barnabas' first missionary endeavor, Peter came to Antioch to fellowship with and encourage the believers there. You'll see that in chapter 2, verse 11. The church in Antioch was made of Jews and Gentiles, living as brothers and sisters in the gospel. So Peter is up there with them and everything's going well, but then the Judaizers arrive in Antioch in chapter two, verse 12. And this whole situation of what happens here in these verses leads to Paul and Barnabas going back down to Jerusalem to deal with this. You'll see that in Acts 15, the whole of Acts 15, but specifically verse one to six. So the questions for verse 11 to 14, question one, what was Peter doing in Antioch before the Judaizers came in verse 12? Question two, what happened to Peter, Barnabas and the Jewish believers in Antioch once the Judaizers came? Verse 12 to 13. Question three, what does Paul call this? What does Paul call what they did? Verse 13 to 14. And question four, how did Paul respond to this? Verse 11 and verse 14. God bless.